think you're hearing Dolby Atmos music correctly, well, you probably aren't. In this video, I'll cover the different ways to actually play Dolby Atmos music to your audio setup, whether that's a pair of headphones, a soundbar system, or even a full home theater setup. There's a ton of confusion regarding Dolby Atmos music and how it's supported between the device streaming the music and the speaker system that's actually playing the music. Honestly, I had to rewrite so many different parts of this video because the further along I got with it, the more confusing this topic became, so I'd really appreciate a like on this one. Before we get into it, I think it makes sense to give a brief overview of Dolby Atmos music and how it's different from traditional music. Atmos music has quickly become the most popular spatial audio format out there. The second most popular would be Sony's 360 Reality Audio, but they aren't even close in terms of supported devices and music catalogs. Dolby Atmos music is not just another buzzword in the audio industry. It's a 3D object-based audio format that's designed to pull listeners into a song, creating an immersive 3D sound experience, very similar to the Dolby Atmos used in movies. Think of traditional stereo music like a painting. It's flat and two-dimensional. It's mixed with just a left and right channel of audio in mind. Atmos music, on the other hand, is like a 3D sculpture. It surrounds you, offering depth and dimension. At its core, Dolby Atmos music works by freeing the individual sounds from channel restrictions. Instead of assigning audio to a specific channel, like the left or right channel, sounds in Dolby Atmos are treated as objects. Now these objects can move freely in a 3D space, allowing for sounds to come from above and move all around you. This results in a more dynamic and captivating listening experience where each instrument and vocal feels way more alive. With a base understanding of Dolby Atmos music in mind, let's talk about how it's supported. Now, this is where things got very complicated and confusing. There are so many different caveats here, but I'm gonna do my best to make this as simple as possible. There are basically four things to keep in mind when determining Dolby Atmos music support. The music streaming platform and music itself, the streaming device, the speakers, and the connection method between the streaming device and speaker system. At the time of recording, the only platforms that support Dolby Atmos Music are Apple Music, Amazon Music Unlimited, and Tidal. You must be using one of these platforms to stream the music and the music track itself needs to be mixed with Dolby Atmos. This is usually pretty clear when searching for tracks inside of these apps. The device that is streaming the music, like an iPhone, Android phone, Nvidia Shield, Fire TV stick, Apple TV, gaming console, etc., must also support Dolby Atmos music. This is where things get a little difficult because there are so many different devices out there, I couldn't possibly say them all. But here are some of the main ones. If it's not on this list, then do a quick Google search like does streaming device name support Dolby Atmos music? You should be able to find an answer somewhere. Naturally, the device actually producing the audio or music also needs to support Dolby Atmos music. This means the headphone, soundbar, or traditional surround sound system. From what I understand, basically any set of headphones or Bluetooth headphones are going to support Dolby Atmos music. Now, big air quotes here because this is far different from the Dolby Atmos music going to a full surround sound system like this Sonos Arc Sub and Era 300s used as surrounds. For soundbars, as long as the soundbar itself supports Dolby Atmos, it should work fine. And for a traditional surround sound system with an AV receiver and speakers, as long as the receiver supports Dolby Atmos music, and you have the speakers configured properly, then it should also work fine. If the device actually playing the music isn't capable of playing Dolby Atmos content, then naturally it can't really play Dolby Atmos music. Lastly, the method of sending the audio signal from the streaming device to the speaker system needs to support Dolby Atmos music. This also gets a bit confusing because there are even more caveats here, but let's go through a quick list of these. Bluetooth, yes. AirPlay, yes, with some exceptions. Chromecast built in, no, except for Tidal Connect, which is exclusive to Tidal and select devices. Auxiliary or 3.5 millimeter cable, no. Digital optical cable, no. HDMI cable, yes, I'll explain more later on. Again, just to reiterate, for Atmos Music to work, the music streaming platform and music track itself, the streaming device, the speakers, and the connection method all must support Dolby Atmos Music. If one of these things doesn't support it, then you won't get it. End of story. And the really annoying thing is, even if all sections support Dolby Atmos music, it still may not work. 
This is due to the level of software development involved with decoding Atmos and making it work on certain devices. And that makes this whole video even more complicated to make. But let's cover some of these confusing caveats and give a few examples of how to actually listen to Adobe Atmos music. You can get Atmos music using Bluetooth to transmit the audio signal, but there are a few device specific settings that you have to check. I used both an iPhone 15 Pro and an iPhone 11 Pro to test with. Unfortunately, I didn't have an Android phone to test with as well. Both Tidal and Amazon Music Unlimited get Dolby Atmos without issue on my iPhones, regardless of the device they are playing to. However, iPhones have some really dumb requirements for Atmos content to work inside of Apple Music. In the settings under Music, there are a few different options for Dolby Atmos. Automatic, Always On, and Off. If set to automatic, tracks from Apple Music will play in Atmos as long as you are using any Apple or Beats Bluetooth headphones, or you are using the built-in speakers on specifically mentioned iPhones or iPads. So if it's set to automatic and you connect via Bluetooth to a soundbar capable of playing Dolby Atmos Music, then it won't play it in Dolby Atmos. Which really doesn't make sense because it works fine with both Tidal and Amazon Music. What's even more annoying is that if you look at their documentation, it says if you want to use wired headphones, choose always on. No mention of other Bluetooth speakers that may be capable of playing Dolby Atmos content. But when I set it to always on and play music to any of my Dolby Atmos soundbars, it works perfectly fine. In separate, slightly more difficult documentation to find, Apple states that with it set to always on, the music app will attempt to play Dolby Atmos tracks on any headphones or speakers connected to an iPhone. It also states that Dolby Atmos will play on any headphones, but not all speakers will play Dolby Atmos as intended. Wish I would have found this document much earlier on, but there it is. Also, in the Bluetooth settings, you sometimes have to set the device type for the speaker to headphone for Dolby Atmos music to work. This doesn't seem to be the case with every system I tested, but sometimes Apple Music works regardless of the device type and other times it only worked with it set to headphone so I don't know what to say here. If you thought that was a little dumb just wait till you hear how AirPlay works. This is hilarious. Now with AirPlay 2 you can get Dolby Atmos music while using both Tidal and Amazon Music Unlimited but you can't with Apple Music. How does that make any sense? Using Apple's own proprietary wireless streaming protocol you can't get Dolby Atmos music when using their own music streaming platform, but you can while using their competitors. It blows my freaking mind. Please make it make sense. Okay, time to calm down. Chromecast built in as a protocol itself can support Dolby Atmos music, but it appears that it has to be implemented by the streaming platform in some way. For example, Tidal has Tidal Connect, which allows you to cast Dolby Atmos tracks to a soundbar or speaker system that also supports Tidal Connect. Out of all the devices that I tested, the Samsung Q700C soundbar was the only one that supported Tidal Connect with my iPhone, and Atmos Music worked properly. The others just used regular Chromecast, and Atmos Music did not work. Amazon Music Unlimited doesn't seem to support it unless you are casting to an Echo Studio, an Amazon device but I wasn't able to verify this. And Apple doesn't allow you to use Chromecast with Apple Music on iOS devices. You can only use Bluetooth or AirPlay to wirelessly stream audio from Apple Music. However, you can use Chromecast with the Apple Music app on Android devices though, but I wasn't able to verify if Dolby Atmos works or not. I would assume no, but I'm not really sure here. You know, good old Apple. And the last on our list of connection methods is HDMI. Now, what do I mean by this? So this includes using a device like an Apple TV 4K, Fire TV Cube, Nvidia Shield TV, or another media streaming device. One of these devices connects to either your TV, soundbar, or AV receiver via an HDMI cable. Then you can download and use the Amazon Music, Tidal, or Apple Music apps. Well, you can only use Apple Music on the Apple TV 4K, but you get the point here. While HDMI most certainly supports transmitting Dolby Atmos Music, the streaming device must also support Dolby Atmos Music for the specific app that you're using. I was able to test with an Nvidia Shield TV, Apple TV 4K, and Fire TV Cube, and here are some of my findings. Dolby Atmos on Apple Music works great on the Apple TV 4K, but obviously you can't get Apple Music on any other devices though. Atmos on Amazon Music only worked with the Fire TV Cube, and I'm sure it works with other Fire TV devices that support Atmos as well. And Tidal is basically the winner here, where it worked on all three devices. It seems that they've focused on getting as much compatibility across tons of devices, which is awesome to see. 
So this is where it comes back to, even if all things actually support Dolby Atmos music, there could be software limitations where it won't actually work. I expect this to change over time as it is further integrated into more platforms, apps, gets updated, etc. Now there's something kind of big that isn't really being talked about all that much. I've seen it discussed in audiophile forums and Reddit, but it's not like clearly stated by streaming platforms from what I can tell. Platforms like Apple Music, Tidal, and Amazon Music all claim to offer lossless quality music, which is true. All these platforms do indeed offer some form of lossless quality music tracks. They are all at varying bit rates, but that's besides the point. Dolby Atmos music, however, is not offered in lossless quality on any of these platforms. Now, how is that so? Dolby Atmos music uses Dolby Digital Plus JOC. This is the technology used to deliver Dolby Atmos via the Dolby Digital Plus format. If you're unfamiliar with this, it's the same audio format used by Netflix, Disney Plus, Max, and others to offer Dolby Atmos audio with various movies and TV shows, all of which are compressed or lossy audio formats. There doesn't seem to be a way to listen to lossless quality Dolby Atmos music though. It seems to only exist in certain album Blu-ray discs, most of which are live performances and not studio recordings. Now don't get me wrong, Dolby Atmos music in its current form sounds amazing with lots of different tracks and albums and a large majority of people are going to thoroughly enjoy listening to it. But it's always nice to push the needle just a little to try to get better and higher quality content. I'm sure we will see updates and enhancements to Dolby Atmos music as time goes on and it will continue to get better and better. We'll just have to wait and see though. If you have any questions, leave them in a comment down below. I or someone else may be able to help. I hope you found this video helpful in some way. If not, hey, let me know anyways. I appreciate the feedback regardless. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.